In this video, you will learn how to construct the basic geometry for a fixed gear bicycle. This geometry will act as an underlay for the solid geometry that will become your custom frame and fork and be combined with all the other parts you've designed this far to create an entire bicycle assembly. Before we do that, we will discuss the key components that make up a bicycle frame. Shown here highlighted in yellow is the bicycle frame and the fork. The frame consists of two triangles. The main triangle consists of the top tube, the head tube, the down tube, and the seat tube. The rear triangle consists of the seat stay and the chain stay. These three tubes meet together at what is known as the bottom bracket, which is a cylinder through which the center of the crank passes. At the back, where the two stays meet together, is the rear dropout, which is a slot which holds the rear axle of the rear wheel. In the front, where the fork is located, is a front dropout that holds the front wheel. The fork consists of a blade that meets at the top at the crown and emanating from the crown is a steering tube that passes up through the head tube. It's this steering tube that the handlebar attaches to via the stem. In order to design our bicycle geometry, we will be starting with a sketch similar to this one. And we will be adjusting the appropriate dimensions to change the proportions of our bicycle to suit our own personal needs. So a large person would be making the bicycle larger, a small person making it smaller. But before we can do this, each of us has to determine what the appropriate frame size is for our particular bodies. Traditionally, all bicycles had horizontal top tubes, and the frame size was simply the measurement of the seat tube from the bottom bracket to the location where the top tube intersected with the seat tube. In recent years, bike manufacturers have taken the top tube and pulled the back end downward and moved the front end upward. This has had several advantages in that it allows the stem to be shorter and the frame to be a little bit lighter weight and also improves the ability to stand over the bicycle. To maintain traditional bike frame sizes, the original theoretical location of the horizontal top tube has been maintained so that there won't be any confusion moving from older bikes to newer bikes. Your first step is to determine the appropriate frame size for your bicycle. To determine your appropriate frame size, you've been supplied with a chart that's been taken from the Trek website. Locate your height in the chart and read off the potential frame size for your size body. In most cases, there's a choice of three sizes. If your height is one of the stated heights in the chart, go ahead and use the middle frame size. If your height falls somewhere in between, you have a choice between the high-end frame size for the shorter height and the low-end frame size for the taller height. If you're a person that has short legs and a long torso, use the larger frame size because this will give you a longer top tube. If you're a person that has a short torso and long legs, use the shorter frame size because this will have a shorter top tube. So for example, if I was 5 foot 10 and I had relatively short legs, I would want to pick the 56 frame size. Whereas if I was 5 foot 10 and I had a short torso and long legs, I would pick the 54. Another person who is perhaps 5 foot 7 and has long legs would look at this chart and have a choice between 54 and 52. Because they have a short torso, they would choose the 52. If you are in one of these height groupings here, again, pick the one that's appropriate for your torso length. If you have a long torso, Pick this one here, the short torso, pick the lower number here. 
If you're already riding a bicycle and you're happy with the frame size that you're using, just go ahead and use that frame size for your bike design. People with short torsos have inseams that are longer than 50% of their total height. People with long torsos have inseams that are shorter than 45% of their total height. Your inseam is the distance from the floor to where your legs meet at the pelvis. The accurate way to determine this is to use a machine similar to this. But I won't blame you if you prefer not to go this route. To get a close enough approximation without going through all that trouble, just simply take your pants inseam and add one inch to get your true inseam. Just look on the back of your 501s on the label and that will give you your inseam. Close enough. While you're at it, you're going to want to convert your inseam into centimeters. To do that, take the inseam in inches and multiply by 2.54. So for example, a 33 inch inseam is 33 times 2.54, which is 83.8 centimeters. So we've decided what our inseam is, and we've decided what size frame we are going to be using. We now, from this information, have to decide what are going to be the appropriate numbers to put in our sketch that defines the shape of our bicycle geometry. To determine these numbers, you've been given two charts from the Trek website. One is for women's bike frames, and the other is for men's bike frames. This video will not give you any advice on determining the proper chart to use. Each chart lists a series of frame sizes, a series of parameters, such as the length of the wheelbase or the length of the seat tube, and also includes in red a series of abbreviations that are included in the sketch that you will be altering. Here, for example, in the sketch, we see the same abbreviations, ETT for effective top tube, ST for seat tube, HA for head angle, and so on. For this example, we will be building a men's 56 centimeter frame. What we want to do is look at the numbers in this column here under 56 centimeters and write down all of the appropriate numbers. These numbers will be input into the sketch. Going back to the sketch, I will now change these numbers. Going in order on the chart, we'll start with the head angle, which is 73 point five. The seat angle, 73.3. You'll notice how the frame is adjusting itself slightly as I change these parameters. The effective top tube of 56 centimeters. The frame size is 56 centimeters. The head tube is 17 centimeters. The chain stay is 41 centimeters. The wheel base, 98.3 centimeters. And the seat tube, 53.3 centimeters. This is the exact geometry, according to Trek, for a 56 centimeter frame. Now if you want, you can tweak some of these numbers, especially these numbers where the top tube meets the seat tube. This will not in any way alter the overall fit of the bicycle because you won't be changing the wheelbase or the angles of any of these important tubes such as the head tube or the seat tube. For example, I can take this number and change it to, say, 1, which makes the top tube more horizontal. Change this number, say, to 5. I can play around with these numbers all I want. The basic geometry of the important components will not be altered. I can even move the front of the top tube up higher if I like.
if I really want to, I can make some subtle adjustments to some of these other parameters, such as the wheelbase or the angles of the tubes, but I wouldn't deviate too far from the recommendations given by Trek. Once I've completed this step, I can finish this sketch. And the next step is to make an adjustment of the seat height and the handlebar height. I'll access that sketch. Now I'm going to take that information regarding my inseam. The seat post, which is the top of the seat down to the bottom bracket, should be adjusted such that the height is your inseam times 0.9. We said that a 33 centimeter inseam was going to be 83.8 centimeters multiplied by 0.9 that's 75.4 centimeters. So I'll make a small adjustment here. You see the seat raises up a little bit. Now we have to decide how to adjust the handlebar height. If you want an, an aggressive racing type of bike, you actually want the handlebars to be very low. The handlebars are always measured with respect to the seat. A low handlebar will have this number higher a high handlebar will have this number lower. For example, if I want a racing bike, I'll increase this dimension, which you see brings the handlebars down. If I want a more relaxed bike that allows me to sit at a more upright angle, I will reduce this dimension, which you see brings the handlebars farther up. We now have all of the important parameters inserted into our geometry we can save this file. The last step is to take this geometry and print it out. Then on top of that, go ahead and sketch some ideas for the actual shape of your frame using the geometry as a guiding underlay. You can see where all the important points are being controlled by the intersections of the underlying geometry but that still gives us latitude to make curves and other variations in the shapes of the various tubes. Try two or three different ideas, bring these to class, and also bring with you the information that determined how you came about this particular frame geometry. That's it. Pretty easy. I'm sure you'll enjoy this project very much.